government is working assiduously to get supplies of vaccines here in the country. And while the government does that, let us continue to practice social distancing and limit gatherings to no more than 10 persons. Remember to wear a mask as well and sanitize your hands. Hello there, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. Today we take you through some of the measures being implemented to restore the economy, share simple steps to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, and showcase some of all reggae icons. Stay with us. Agriculture is critical to Jamaica's future. And while we battle COVID-19, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries continues to help our farmers and fisher folk recover. We will focus on ensuring that Jamaica is food secure, expanding into new export markets, and building sustainable industries. We are building forward together. I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your JIS News for Thursday, February 25, 2021. Government has extended the nightly island-wide curfew as well as the ban on direct flights from the United Kingdom as part of measures to address the rising cases of COVID-19 in the country. The 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew will remain in effect until March 1. The 10-person public gathering limit has also been extended to February 28. As for the ban on direct flights from the UK, a statement from the Office of the Prime Minister says that remains in place until March 15. The other restrictions and protocols for travellers from the United Kingdom are also being extended. This means all non-nationals seeking to enter the island through another country, but who have been in the UK 14 days prior to their intended arrival date in Jamaica, will not be granted entry. Jamaicans in a similar situation will be allowed to enter, but will be tested and detained in state quarantine for a minimum of 48 hours until the results are returned. The Office of the Prime Minister says government is awaiting the results of genome sequence testing of samples sent to the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARPA, to determine the possible presence of new strains of the virus in Jamaica. The restrictions will be reviewed following receipt of these test results. In the meantime, Cabinet is to review other measures that are due to expire on February 28. Reiterating that the virus is spread when persons move, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is encouraging persons to stay within their homes as much as possible. Citizens are further asked to minimize movement for necessary and productive activities, such as going to work, obtaining food and medical supplies, accessing medical services, and conducting business and financial transactions. In other COVID-related news, government has reallocated $48.7 million of the funds budgeted for the coronavirus vaccine risk mitigation program to hire additional health staff and improve conditions for workers. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton made the announcement at a COVID conversations press conference on Tuesday. He says the adjustments were made in light of public concerns regarding the budget and the surge in hospitalizations resulting from the virus. The allocation was made by reducing the money for various public education activities, including radio and TV ad placements, printing materials such as brochures and pamphlets, and public education sessions. Allocations for the vaccination training session for staff, the budget for research, and for engaging the consulting firm One Integrated have also been reduced. The internal discussions with the team uh, suggest that that $48.7 million uh, is would be best reallocated to engaging more staff and 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 supporting where necessary staff motivation and activation in the covid fight residents in and around saint anne will soon have access to a newly constructed family court Justice Minister Delroy Chuck signed a $90.87 million contract for the construction of the facility on Wednesday. The contract will cover retrofitting and internal renovation of a two-story reinforced concrete building. It is to be a fit-for-purpose court consisting of courtrooms and judges' chambers, office spaces, bathrooms and welfare facilities. Minister Chuck says the court will also feature a child-friendly reception area. 
It is expected that the project will get underway in short order and be completed by October. $1.6 billion will be spent on boosting the island's technology infrastructure to fight crime. For the 2021-2022 fiscal year, the Ministry of National Security will purchase $1 billion worth of technological devices to expand the cybersecurity capability of the security forces. The money is allocated in the 2021-2022 estimates of expenditure and will be carried out under the cybersecurity initiatives. This five-year program will end in March 2023. This aspect of our program is critical to successful law enforcement and police operations in Jamaica. As part of the cybersecurity initiatives, closed circuit cameras and other devices have been bought and installed to support Jamaica Eye, which is now completed. Meanwhile, under the security strengthening project, equipment will be purchased and installed to achieve greater connectivity and streamlining of data and procedures. Government has set aside $128.7 million to boost agricultural competitiveness in the upcoming financial year. The allocation to the Agricultural Competitiveness Program Bridging Project is contained in the 2021-2022 Estimates of Expenditure. The program seeks to provide opportunities and lay a solid foundation for fully exploiting the market potential that exists for Jamaican fresh produce locally and internationally. In the new fiscal year, renovation and construction works will be completed on a packing facility, on farm access roads and drains at the Spring Garden Agro Park. Pumping works will also be installed at the Spring Plain Agro Park. And finally, $150 million has been budgeted to continue rehabilitation work at the Bodles Research Station in St. Catherine. The project, which is being implemented by the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, will see the construction of a new piggery to improve the delivery of support services to pig farmers. Additionally, work will be completed on a milking system and a new herd management system will be implemented. The Bodles Research Station will also receive a biodigester and an animal performance testing facility. Greenhouses will also be renovated and the Phase 2 upgrade of the domestic water supply is set for completion. These were outlined in the 2021-2022 estimates of expenditure, now before the House of Representatives. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. Informing Jamaica today confirmed its first imported case of coronavirus. Educating. If you follow the recommended procedures, it is highly likely that you will not get the disease. Going beyond to keep you informed and connected. Welcome to Get the Fact. Even through the pandemic. Helping you stay safe while we protect ourselves. Dependable. Impactful. Accurate. This is your JIS News. Credible. Trustworthy. Every day, everywhere. Serving our customers proudly. Government has plans in place to drive economic recovery through the strengthening of the legislative agenda. Here's more. Government remains focused on its goal of making this the decade of growth for Jamaica, despite the setbacks caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. This was outlined in the throne speech delivered by Governor-General Sir Patrick Allen during the ceremonial opening of Parliament. As he outlined government's priorities for the 2021-2022 fiscal year, the Governor-General said the goal is to surpass the victories made prior to the onset of the pandemic. We must go beyond this and emerge economically and socially stronger by addressing fundamental gaps that have been exposed and exploiting opportunities that arise. Sir Patrick stressed that a swift recovery could only occur in a stable macroeconomic environment with a supportive legislative and regulatory framework. Therefore, amendments to the Urban Renewal Tax Relief Act 
Financial Administration and Audit Act, Financial Services Commission Act, and Income Tax Relief Large Scale Projects and Pioneer Industries Act will be undertaken in the new fiscal year to further create a supportive environment for business and investments. Furthering the path of growth, government will continue to plan and design major infrastructure projects to have them ready for the post-pandemic rebound. It should be noted that the planning and design phases of government campus and Houses of Parliament are progressing well. The planned development of the Morant Bay Urban Centre is now in, execution, in the execution phase with cabinet approval for the joint venture agreement. Ongoing projects include the rehabilitation of groins along the Montego Bay waterfront and road work being done on the Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project, SHIP. Work is now completed on the closed Harbor Beach and the new facility, Harmony Beach Park, will be officially opened soon. Through amendment of the Bath of the Apostle and Milk River Acts, public-private partnerships for the Milk River Hotel and Spa and Bath Fountain Hotel will be sought to enable their development into world-class facilities. Enabling a striving environment for businesses, the government is driving innovation of macro, small and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs, through research and development. Through the Scientific Research Council, a number of new product development ideas have been commercialized into varying products such as jams, seasonings, drinks and sauces. Provision is also being made to build capacity through the Small Business Development Center. The manufacturing sector strategy was approved, facilitating implementation of a five-year plan with the ultimate goal of increasing local manufacturing output and employment by 23% within five years. On to health, Governor General Sir Patrick Allen highlighted proactive responses by the government to the health and economic impacts of COVID-19. Notably, he said, was an economic policy response inclusive of $15 billion in tax cuts and the provision of approximately $20 billion for the COVID-19 allocation of resources for employees' care program. The Governor-General also spoke to government's move to provide safe and adequate supplies of COVID-19 vaccines to the island. It is projected that we will soon receive our first vaccine shipments through the global COVAX facility. The government continues to explore various supply options and plans are well in advance for distribution of the vaccine. According to Sir Patrick, government is continuing with initiatives to strengthen the general health system. These include the construction and expansion of intensive care and high dependency units at hospitals across the island. The government, in a year which was like no other, continued to focus on enhancing healthcare services delivery. Managing the response to the COVID-19 pandemic requires multi-sectorial collaboration. It is a whole of society approach. Sir Patrick said the pandemic has also heightened the need for amendments to be made to the Public Health and Quarantine Acts and the Disaster Risk Management Act to allow for greater enforcement measures. Strengthening the security apparatus remains a high priority for the government. As such, for the 2021-2022 financial year, there will be continuous investments in mobility and technology to include the expansion of the National CCTV Surveillance Program. This is to aid intelligence and forensic gathering and investigation that will help to secure reliable and legitimate evidence. Four pieces of legislation which have advanced to the bill stage are key to supporting this move. Additionally, the government will be seeking parliamentary approval for other key policy and legislative measures designed to strengthen our crime-fighting efforts, enhance rehabilitation and reintegration of offenders, and improve public order. These include the Major Organized Crime and Anti-Corruption Agency Investigation and Prosecution Procedures Regulations and the Amendment to the Corrections Act.
Meanwhile, operational changes within the judiciary system has resulted in an increase in the number of judgments. By the end of March 2022, there should be no judgment that is outstanding for more than three to six months at the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal. For the upcoming fiscal year, government intends to introduce a mediation bill, amend the Criminal Records Rehabilitation of Offenders Act, and repeal the 19th Century Notaries Public Act. Furthermore, there are plans to pilot the enactment of two bills to, among other things, grant a limited right of appeal to the prosecution. And the legal frameworks for the anti-money laundering combating financing of terrorism is to be strengthened in the coming fiscal year. As government moves towards a digital society, it will be implementing the Data Protection Act and the Data Protection Regulations, as well as drafting the regulations under the Telecommunications Act. To improve the social security net, the social pension scheme will be implemented in the 2021-2022 financial year. Plans are also being made to amend the National Insurance Act and associated regulations. It is anticipated that these amendments will give effect to increases in several benefits under the scheme. The disabilities regulations, which has been drafted and is to be tabled this year, will support amendments being made to the Disabilities Act. Sir Patrick Allen is calling on all sectors of society to join forces to aid in rebuilding and bolstering the economy in the post-coronavirus period. While the COVID-19 pandemic has no doubt dealt a severe blow to our lives and livelihoods, let us as one Jamaica embrace the challenge and the opportunity to build forward stronger and better together. The numbers keep climbing, and yet, some of you are still complaining about curfew times. Is that being selfish or are you being smart? You continue to blame the government, stating they are not doing enough. But the big question is, are you doing your part to help decrease the spread? The unfortunate reality is that far too many people refuse to take the coronavirus pandemic seriously until they or someone they love gets infected. Now this is what we do not want, and I don't believe I can stress this enough. Wear your mask, sanitize. Of course, we love to hug and socialize, but just ease off some of that right now. Not just for your safety, but also for others. It look hard for your relatives to be home doing all they need to in order not to catch the virus, and you out on the road being reckless and carrying it right home to them. Each one of us needs to help during this fight against COVID-19 as we work to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business in a healthy environment. At the top of the magazine, we ran through some of the COVID-19 protocols. Let's call them the top four. Sanitize hands, maintain physical distance, limit gatherings, and wear a mask. Allow me to add another that is not often mentioned, but is equally important to prevent the spread. Sanitizing your phones. Android iOS, non-internet based. It doesn't matter the brand, type, model, or cost. Phones need to be periodically cleaned. There are no apps, not yet, that will de-germ the outer surface of these mobile gadgets. And unless you have an ultraviolet UV sanitizer toolkit, you'll have to manually decontaminate the device. Germs are everywhere, and so too are our phones inside a bag or pocket, on a table or counter, the car, bed, even in our hands. Placing our phones on these surfaces puts them in constant contact with germs, even the novel coronavirus. And according to the World Health Organization, the virus has a lifespan of up to 96 hours on surfaces. That's four full days on plastic or metals, the type of exterior shell of many phones. Constant touching of the phone with naked fingers that we then use to touch our faces or directly placing the phone to our faces is a recipe for transmitting germs, bacteria or viruses to the body. First thing I do when I get home is I clean my phone 
because you're touching your phone and you're touching this surface that somebody else just touched and then you put the phone to your mouth and you're ha 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 and all of these particles that have ended up on the phone you they end up on i mean in you apart from just not using a phone our only defense is to clean them regularly soap and water would be best but no you should not submerge your phone in liquid instead First, wash your hands with soap and water, then dry them. Ensure that your phone is unplugged to prevent a possible electrical shock. Then, dab a clean cloth, preferably a microfiber or lens cloth, with a 70% isopropyl alcohol solution and wipe the entire surface of your phone. Do not drench the cloth with too much solution, just sufficient to clean the device. In addition, be careful to avoid getting moisture into any openings. If you don't have an alcohol-based cleaning solution at hand, you can also use alcohol wipes. You should ensure the wipes have a relatively high concentration of alcohol. The best is 70% and above. This ensures that any viruses that are on your phone can be effectively killed. While you sanitize your phone, avoid using aerosol sprays, abrasives, and cleaners. And do not spray directly onto the phone screen or back. Bleach should also not be used to clean the phone as it may damage the surface. It is also best to wipe any relevant accessories used with your phone. Chargers, headsets, and phone cases should be sanitized at the same time you clean your device. They should also be removed from the device when cleaning. Now your phone and its friends are clean. To prevent putting your phone against your face or the likelihood of transferring germs or viruses, use Bluetooth a virtual assistant or hands-free speaker system if you can. My job is to ensure that every man, woman and child maintain good health at all times. Our primary function is to ensure that government services are delivered effectively and efficiently. We are building forward together. Practice good hygiene by washing your hands frequently using soap and water. Here's how you should do it while conserving water. Turn on the tap to wet your hands, then turn off the pipe. Lather your hands and the tap with soap. Turn on the tap and wash your hands, back, front, and in between fingers. Use some of the water to wash off the tap, then turn it off. Dry your hands with disposable hand towels. If you don't have running water, use a hand rub containing 62% or more alcohol. If hand sanitizers are not available, rubbing alcohol, Dettol, white rum or household bleach will do the trick. And if all else fails, let hand washing and the handling of potable water be a two-person event. Each person will take turns pouring and washing hands with sitting water. Now is a good time to consider installing a tap on your containers to reduce the risk of water contamination. Faucets can be easily attached to drums, buckets, or five-gallon water bottles. And to ensure that the outside of the containers are clean when recapping, disinfect it with hand rub containing alcohol that's 62% or more. The five R's of water conservation are also necessary to practice. Reduce water wastage by investing in water-saving devices. Reuse water at least twice before discarding. Replace leaking pipes, faucets, and other plumbing equipment. Recycle wastewater and use it for gardening, car washing, or cleaning of public spaces. And reclaim water through rainwater harvesting. We all must play our part to ensure there's water to combat the coronavirus and stave off prolonged drought. There has been a steady flow of reggae month activities since February 1. Here's hoping you have been able to join in the fun. Let's now hear from some of our reggae icons. I thought you 
National ID system will register your picture and fingerprint. It will not need an iris scan unless you don't have a fingerprint and will only take a footprint if you can't give an iris scan or a fingerprint. This will help people with disabilities to get a national ID. NITS is about inclusion, not exclusion, protecting the rights of all Jamaicans. Get the facts at nidsfacts.com. This is where our journey ends, but only for today. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll bring you another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.